Hello. I'm out here just tinkering. It's still crappy and miserable out here, so I don't have heat on, so it's a little cold. But what have I been up to? I needed a boring bar for a job I was working on. I've had the shop open, but it's been too rainy and too miserable out here to really do much. And you can probably hear the rain hitting the roof, the metal part on the roof. But what I've been doing is cutting off, or just in my spare time, I was cutting off the tops of puppet valves of these things. They were from lawnmower engines. Yeah, you can see them. And they are very high carbon steel. You can actually forge them over and actually make boring bars out of them. But I was doing it up and brazing carbide on them. Carbide tips. And they work pretty good. I was I had to get into a um it was a three eighths hole to open it up. You can see the same ends. But I had to get into that small hole to open it up to a 40 degree taper for a project I was working on. And it was in steel, so I had to get something that would hold up a little better than just the forged stuff. So I braced carbide on. While I was doing that, I made another scraper like I gave Paul over Paul's garage. I like this style because it, it's kind of stiff but it has a spring to it. I was watching this old Tony and saw one of his old videos where he got, had the little one that was getting into dovetails and stuff. I was like that would be handy so I made one of those just braced them up. I drilled, this is a 3 8 bar so I just drilled a one size under for drill bit and just pressed them on and then I made this style here which I saw over at um, Match Channel Look Creations yeah, it works pretty good it has it has just it's nice and stiff but it has right and mount springiness to it so it won't chatter I did get a surface plate after I got that stuff lapped and everything. Family decided they were looking in my Amazon wish list and found a little surface plate and they ordered it for me so I got a granite surface plate now so that I'll use that for scraping everything and the glass ones I'll just use for lapping. But I got those done and they work pretty good. I was just testing it on here. It they work pretty good. They have the right amount of springiness and they don't want chatter. But anyways, on to what we're doing. Let me clean up here and we'll get everything set up here. The handle for the wide scraper. I like the white scraper first because you don't have a chance of really digging holes in it unless you're really trying to in the surface. Uh, Matt over at Look Creations made his with an old file. I wanted the springiness so I just used the leg off of the turkey fryer. That's why it's missing the third leg. It's about an eighth inch wide or eighth inch thick and about an inch and a quarter inch and a half wide so it's nice and stiff but has a nice springiness to it okay I'm just tearing this motor down and rebuilding it cleaning it up and getting it ready because it has a half inch shaft here it's a little stiff. It's it's an old General Electric motor from early 1920s. 
It does run, but it is stiff. It needs the oil passages all cleaned, the insides full of gunk and stuff. Um, this is a little different than most modern motors. This is different than any modern motor, really. So, I'll explain a little bit about motors real quick, and then we'll get while we're tearing this down. Okay, first thing about electricity for AC, here's your baseline. You have your positive and your negative. Now AC actually looks like this, a sine wave, most of you guys know. Well, when you have motors and stuff, you actually have more, you might only have one phase coming in, but there's actually two phases, at least two phases in any motor. You have different ways that it'll actually generate the second phase to shove it over, which actually drives the direction of the motor. Now, when you have, let me get a one here. Most motors actually have either a start capacitor, which as the AC builds up, the capacitor is actually in line. It's like a tiny battery that holds a charge for a fraction of a second. And as soon as it gets up here, it's charged up. And when this waveform drops back down, it's the capacitor actually releases that charge back out. So you have an extra waveform that actually you have the capacitor start here and actually form the second waveform like this, which actually pushes the start winding or the second phase over. Usually you'll have a start winding and a run winding. The start winding is has a lot more resistance to it and it helps give that sudden push to get the motor started. This is usually what the second phase is on. Some motors actually use the coil of the motor itself to generate the second phase to get it going also, which those usually have a centrifugal clutch in them. As it spins up, it'll disengage the clutch and you'll actually hear the thing actually click when it slows back down. It will re-engage and click. Usually you'll find something like this. It just has two or three wires coming out of it. Or they might be metal. I've run in, I've usually done a lot of metal ones. Now this here can also be used for a three phase because with a three phase motor Technically, the third phase is just there to start the motor. It can actually run off of the two phases, like you would have on a um, 220 outlet, because it's actually doing, up here, it's, here's one 110 phase, it's usually doing that, and then you have the second line, it gives another 220, or another 110 from center out. Zero. So you get the idea. Now, uh, if you hook up a three-phase motor to 
the just two of the windings you can actually take and pull start it and get it running you just wrap a string around it or a rope around a, a pulley or something give it a good yank and plug it in at the same time it'll actually run on the single phase 220 it's just there to start it it can also be run off of start capacitors too kind of like this but you have to match it to the motor itself do match it to the horsepower of the motor now there is a third type called a that's commonly found it's a shunt motor is what I call them Now the way these work, as the magnetics are going around, it'll just buzz. Now if you have a now if you have a short in it in the magnetic field, a shunt, it'll actually act. It'll actually act as the capacitor built in. The tiny little coils of copper will actually build up a small charge and actually create the second phase. As it goes around, it'll charge these up. The AC waveforms coming around, charge these up. They'll build up as soon as that it gets back down to. As soon as it charges up here, it'll charge these coils up. And then as soon as it drops back down, that will actually discharge and create that second phase. Okay. With this one here, you have equal resistance windings for the motor and you have the capacitor right here you send power into one here here's your common you send power into one side of the capacitor and into the coil it will create the second phase into the second winding and it will use that as the start winding now if you send it into the other side instead Suddenly this will create the second phase on this and use it as a run winding. As you can see the stator and everything is actually on the rotor. And there is no stator windings. These are actually copper that's kind of beaded over and it creates magnetic shunts in it which actually helps shove the it actually creates the um, second phase as it's going around so that it creates the push Here's another shunt motor, a modern one. This is actually out of a microwave oven. This has the fan on it, that when the microwave is turned on, you hear the fan turn on. You can see the uh, there. You can see the copper coil here that's welded together to create the shunt. There's one right here and one right here out of phase or 90 degrees out of phase so as this is coming in it's creating the alternating current and actually creating the magnetic field inside of the coil like a transformer which 
actually these here will actually act as like a capacitor they'll act like a tiny little battery and when the magnetic field goes through it it will actually build up a charge in those very small and when the field and when the electricity comes back off of the AC waveform back to zero these release the charge that's built in, up in them and will actually shove create the second phase in the magnetic or in the base of this thing so you actually have the two phases that's the way a shunt motor works so I'll get this all cleaned up here and I got some sawdust and some other stuff and old gunk and grease in it I do have some side to side place so I'll have to make a bushing to go over here to take up the side play on the shaft for what I'm wanting to do with it and yeah these do use bronze bushings they don't this was made before they made ball bearings so a lot of the stuff was made with uh, C932 or SA660 grade bearing bronze which is what I used in the die filer and this is from early 1920s and the bushings are still like new in it this motor was actually used to run some of the earlier electric washing machines so that's what this was used for I'll get these cleaned up get them painted get everything up and running again start putting it back together I just clean and got these all painted they're just sitting here the only thing is I gotta clean up all the nuts and bolts and stuff so one of these little jewelry cleaners they're just little vibratory cleaners. They work really good for cleaning the little nuts and bolts. Just take a little bit of purple power. It's not very purple. And I have no idea why the water was actually purple in the first place. that run and we'll clean those right up okay I got all these polished up they're looking nice so let's get to start put back together I've already got this lined up a little bit here. I'll just put these in and press it together. I need to get it together to measure the um, side play and stuff on the shaft. I gotta make a bushing for it to take up the end play on it. This thing was so gummed up with old grease and stuff, or old dried oil, that I'm surprised it even ran. It did run barely, but it was sluggish. It didn't actually get started up, and it smelled awful. The brass discs here were actually corroded. They were black from so much corrosion and so much oxide. So, it's starting, it's just tight there. 
Now let's see how much end play we have here. Zero that out. So, one hundred and ninety five thousandths. Actually, it's it was one hundred. hundred ten thousandths. So, let's go make a brass bushing for this thing. Get this back together. Get the end play out. Uh, for our brass stock, I just have this old sprue. It's just a brass sprue that I had cast something and it was left over. But, Looks to be running true enough. quarter outer diameter and it is 900,000 so I got 157 thousandths to go Pretty much right on. Center drill, real quick, and Punch a half inch hole through it.
I just ground off the back rake so it doesn't have that anymore. Saves me a little time, I guess. Put the spacer in here. Push it right up against the front of the face. Now we're square to the work since we already faced this off. Okay, I'm going to run it up just touch the face and we'll set the dial over here to zero okay we're on zero now the tool bit is 330 seconds I think showing 97 thousandths so back it out Ninety-seven. Zero it again. Okay. Now we should be right on front there. Now we need to go one hundred and ten thousandths. So one hundred. Ten thousandths. We'll lock the carriage and we'll start parting off. Even if it's a spare piece, you still want to kind of get the burr off of it, otherwise it'll slice you when you're handling it. That's nice. So, let's go put it in and put this thing together. As soon as I tapped it down, it had a burr on it that was causing it not to go on, but now it's on, so let's get it all put together. I left about 10 thousandths end play in this thing so that it can doesn't bind up.
can do brushes or the spring I put in the brushes it sticking out just a little far and it's catching up on it. There we are. I think that's pretty good actually. Shaft's nice and free now. Yeah, there's no end play at all. I think that would be called a success. Now I just gotta get everything done up for what I was going to use it for and make an arbor for this. These are chainsaw, or not chainsaw, uh, circular saw blade sharpening discs. That's a lot of diamond grit for that and they come with this one here too but I'm not sure how to attach that one yet but it's 5 8 rim of diamond grit on both sides but I make a shroud and stuff so it separates the shaft and the wheel and everything and the motor so that no grit or carbide dust can get back to the motor itself. Okay, I think I'm going to call it quits. Yeah, I'm going to call it quits. It's getting late and... Alright, thanks for watching. See ya. Yeah, it's just the desk that's carrying a soundboard.